السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وكرة عيوننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد <تصفيق> فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في قرآنه العزيز بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والتين والزيتون وطور سينين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We ask him, the Lord of all worlds, the exalted, the almighty, to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon the final messenger, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. So how are you all this evening? Good? Do you know what I'm going to be talking about? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? So do you or do you not know what I'm going to be talking about? Do you know there was once, uh, uh, we could say he was a learned person who wanted to once address, rather he didn't want to address the gathering. There was a uh, community that wanted him to come and address their gathering. So they invited him. And uh, he was a, a busy person. It was difficult to get him to come. But, uh, you know, with, with, uh, they, they, they persuaded him somehow. They convinced him. And he uh, honored their invite. He comes to address the gathering. The people had gathered just like you have. And uh, he starts off the talk by asking them, just like how I asked you all, do you all know what I'm going to be talking about? They all replied, just like you did. Yes, because perhaps he had put up a slide, maybe, you know, ignite your dreams, the importance of goal setting. So they all said yes. To which he said, very good, if you all know what I'm going to be talking about, then I don't have to talk. And he left. Now the people were sad. And they thought, you know what, let's invite him again, but this time let's be careful. If he asks us a similar question, we'll respond accordingly. So the second time, after a lot of difficulty, they convinced him, he comes. And now he poses the question again. Ah, how are you all? Are you all good? Do you know what I'm going to be talking about? They all very firmly replied, No, we don't know what you're going to be talking about. He said, Ya Allah, what's the point of talking to an audience that doesn't know what I'm going to be talking about? And he leaves. <laughs> now the people think to themselves, You know, we need to outwit him. If not, we can't benefit from him. So what we'll do is, 50% of us, Half of the gathering, let's say we know. Half of the gathering, let's say we don't know. They invite him a third time now, with a lot of difficulty. He comes again, ah, how are you all? Ah, good, good, we are all good. Do you know what I'm going to be talking about? A very definite yes from one side and a definite no from the other side. Ah, very good. The ones who know, please tell the ones who don't know. And he left. <laughs> now, is that going to be the case today? Yeah, well. 
Is that going to be the case today? Today, inshallah ta'ala, <coughs> I'm going to be talking, yes, but I'm going to be learning from you. At the end of the day, I'm just an instrument. Uh, we pray before we start. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa ahlul uqadatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. We pray to Allah that Allah puts the right words upon our tongues and that we touch on something that is or matters that are appropriate, matters that are beneficial for us as believers in this world as well as the next. With that we commence. I would like to start off by reminding ourselves in regards to a powerful ayah in the chapter that I read at the, at the beginning, uh, Surah uh, Teen, which is Surah number 95. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in ayah number 4, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ that we have certainly created man in the best of statures. Now, the scholars of tafsir, they explain that this ayah tells us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our maker, our creator, he has fashioned us in terms of our outward appearance as well as our inward, uh, inward appearance in terms of what is hidden, what is inside us in the best of forms. In other words, we human beings have been created for the accomplishment of great things. We have been fashioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for success, for achievement. It's just that we need to discover ourselves. We need to discover ourselves. And you might be wondering, well, success, that's a big word. Accomplishments, big words. I don't see any of that in my life. How come? And how are you saying this? You know what? Uh, I, I don't think it makes sense. Well, it doesn't make sense at this point because maybe you got lost in the way. You got lost. You need to find yourself. You need to discover yourself. You need to harness your talents. You need direction in your life. You need motivation. And the minute you identify your talents, your abilities, your strengths, the minute you discover yourself, the minute you discover the purpose that you are working towards, the minute you set goals, as we are going to be talking about, inshallah, the minute you identify your goals, your ambitions, you are going to definitely be able to achieve great things in this life. And as believers, we believe in the life of the next, so we are going to achieve great things in the life of the next as well. So this is the first reminder that I want to start off with. In another place, Allah says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ uh, Remember when your Lord said to the angels, and this was before creating our father Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the angels, إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ Indeed, I am going to place on earth Khalifa. Now, Khalifa is a big term. It's a broad spectrum term. And obviously, uh, time does not permit for us to go into a lengthy, detailed explanation in that regard. But still, Khalifa is a representative. Khalifa is translated as uh, a creation that is going to succeed generation after generation. It's a big word. It's a word again that is uh, a synonym to success, a synonym to achievements, a, a synonym to accomplishments. So we have been created for that purpose. So we have it within each and every one of us. So this is something that we have to constantly keep telling ourselves. You will understand the importance of it as we go on and as we touch on negative talk. There's a lot of negative talk that we tell ourselves and that's why we have this low self-esteem. We have this uh, lowly image of ourselves. Having said that, let's move on to what is a goal. Because time is of the essence and we have a good ground to cover, inshallah. So what is a goal? If you look at dictionaries, if you look at Wikipedia, that's the place that everybody goes to generally. Uh, if you Google it, Google gives you the definition of a goal as a desired result, a person or a system envisions. Not only envisions, plans and commits to achieve a personal or organizational desired result in terms of development. 
Uh, okay, let me simplify it. We all have goals. We all have goals. For all of you who made it here, brothers and sisters, this is one of your goals. Or at least it was a goal. The minute you heard about the event, without you knowing, you created a goal for yourself. That you know what, I'm going to make it to the event. And alhamdulillah, the event materialized by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah. And here you are, all of you have achieved this particular goal. Without you even knowing it. It's a goal that you set. It's a goal that you have achieved. You've come here. So likewise, without you knowing, you must have set a number of goals in your life. So it's important to be able to understand these goals. It's important to be able to define these goals. And it's important to be able to set proper and relevant goals. And that's the whole point of this uh, discussion, inshallah. Why are goals so important? Why are goals so important? You might be thinking, but why do we have to define it? Why do we have to talk about it? Why do we have to learn about it? Yes, you're right. I did make a goal to come here and here I am. So why is it so important? Why do I have to, you know, understand goals? Number one, the right kind of goals propel you forward. They propel you forward. They push you forward. They motivate you forward. You see, a goal is an external representation of your inner desires. It's a constant reminder telling you what you need to accomplish. By the end of this talk, you will come to realize the types of goals. You will maybe be able to identify certain goals that are existing in your life. And inshallah, tonight you're not going to go to sleep. You are not going to go to sleep unless you think about your goals, unless you write down your goals. And if you don't do that, you're not going to go to sleep. Why? Because the thought of not being able to do it will not let you sleep. Your goals will now haunt you to have goals in your life. Another reason as to why goals are so important. Goals transform huge mountains. Mountains like perhaps Mount Everest into scalable ones. Mount Everest is scalable as well, by the way. But it transforms huge mountains of that nature into walkable hills. You know, the other day, interestingly, I was watching a video in regards to people who uh, scale Mount Everest, climb Mount Everest. You know, it's not easy. We think, oh, we have heard of so and so. Maybe in each of our countries, we have people who have summited, who have climbed Mount Everest. And you see people making a big deal out of it. You see them come back down from the mountain and write books. You see them being interviewed. You, you see all of this and you're wondering, uh, well, yeah, climbing a mountain. It's not my cup of tea, but why is it such a big deal? Well, you know, that video very clearly outlines how daunting and how difficult a task it is, even though it has been commercialized in a big way today. It's a big source of making money. You actually have companies that will take you to the top of the mountain and back and you have to pay them maybe ten thousand dollars twenty thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars and in that video they went on to explain that you have you have packages that go up to about a hundred thousand dollars depending on the facilities and you know whatever they give you basically but anyway the whole process of it you and i you can't just climb up the mountain that particular mountain uh, there are very dangerous treks that have to be crossed and also, right at the top, the oxygen is so thin, it's so thin, that our lungs cannot cope with it. And that is why even before they climb, they acclimatize the climbers gradually. You have, base, you have a base camp, and you have camps set out throughout the mountain. So initially, maybe even two weeks before you actually attempt the climb, you will go to base camp, which is somewhere at the base of Mount Everest, and come back. Base camp is a place where helicopters can go and come. But as you make your way up to camp one, camp two, camp three, camp four, and then summit Mount Everest, you maybe from camp two onwards, you won't even start getting hot food because of the high winds, etc. They find it very difficult to cook warm food there. 
helicopters cannot make it there and if something were to happen in camp 3 or camp 4 the only rescue mission is to bring you back on a stretcher and this is why they use the help of people known as Sherpas there every team that takes people up the mountain have Sherpas Sherpas are people from that native area and due to the fact that they were born there and they've been in that environment uh, you know, a lot of research has been done into these type of people. Their lungs are bigger than other people and therefore they are able to handle the, the climate there. They're able to handle the thinning oxygen. They are able to climb greater heights than you and I. Now my point being, even Mount Everest, you can't summit it just overnight. It takes a lot of planning, it takes a lot of dedication and most importantly, you need goals. You kind of need to break down that huge trek into like base camp, camp one, camp two, camp three. Now when you look at it that way, you think to yourself, ah, you know what, it's something that I can do. When you look at, oh my God, the top of Mount Everest, no, I don't think that's my cup of tea. But when you look at it this way, then yeah, maybe it, it, it seems possible. You can do it. So this is in a way what goals do in terms of helping you achieve great things in your lives. Number three, another reason as to why goals are so important goals hold you accountable for failure if you don't have concrete goals and if you don't give yourself a timeline if you don't have deadlines to achieve certain goals you can't hold yourself accountable now we're going to give you examples in terms of goals let's say for example you put in a goal to to learn a certain language okay a certain language within a given period of time let's say for us believers we are reading the Quran, okay? And we bring in a goal, you know what? By the end of 2019, I'm going to absorb and learn the fundamentals, the basics of the Arabic language. You have a deadline. This is the beginning of 2019. And you think to yourself, by the end of 2019, I'm going to do this. Or you put in a financial goal. By the end of 2019, I am going to come out completely of credit, out of credit card debt. I have two cards, three cards. And because I had the, you know, the, the, the banks are very intelligent. Oh, you know, just buy, take it and go. Don't worry, just take it and go. <laughs> or they'll market it in such a way, a refrigerator, which is like 400,000 rupees, only 2,000 rupees. What? Only 2,000 rupees? Oh yeah, across 60 months. And then you think to yourself, you know what, 2,000 rupees is not a big deal. And I'm getting this massive refrigerator with a TV screen. Who's going to watch TV on the, on, on the refrigerator? Seriously. But then the way they market it, the way they put out the offers, 50% off. Go stay here. Oh, I need this card. I need this card. And then you end up having like 10 cards across 10 banks. And then you think to yourself, see, this is, this is a web of debt that they're trying to drag you into. So perhaps, coming back to goals, let's say for 2019, you're looking at coming out of credit card debt entirely. Now you're going to hold yourself accountable by the end of 2019 if you've not done that. If you have not covered ground in that regard, you're going to hold yourself accountable. If you don't have goals, let's say you don't care, you know what, who cares? Credit cards, I'm just going to go swipe, 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 swipe. You know, think about it. When you have to give out money, like even when you go pump fuel, when you have to give out your money, you go to the fuel station, the petrol shed, and then the guy comes and says, you know, how much do you want me to pump? Kia the Gandu, for example, yeah? And then you take out your wallet, and you're going to be giving out notes. You're going to be giving out money. You look at the money that you have, and you're like, you know what? Um, 2,000 rupees. But when you see that shiny plastic, a ah, full tank, card, right? So who cares if it's 8,000 or 10,000, I'll, I'll, I'll sort it out at the end of the month. And that accumulates, accumulates and starts giving birth, interest upon interest. And then, you know, you end up, you know, having this massive bill towards it. Yes, the world is moving towards a, you know, all plastic and no hard cash kind of a, a setting, yes. But we have to be mindful in terms of our finances. This is another thing. You will see the categories of goals and one area is in terms of your finances. Now, also talking about why goals are so important. 
Someone once said, if you aim at nothing, you will hit it every time. If you aim at nothing, you will hit nothing every time. Think about it, goals give you focus. If I were to call one of you, I, uh, you know, last week when talking to the, the, the class where I teach young children on Saturday mornings, I, asked, I called one of them, I think it was Zaid perhaps, and I told him, imagine I'm giving you a bow and an arrow, and I'm telling you to shoot with all your might. The first question you're going to ask me, where am I to shoot? Or what am I to shoot at? Without giving a target, if you were to ask someone to shoot, the question that they're going to ask, obviously, is what am I to shoot at? So without a target ahead of you, without today's youngsters, sadly, when you ask some of them, they have no direction. They don't know what they're doing, why they're studying, or why they are in a certain stream. They don't have ambitions ahead of them. They, don't, they cannot see themselves in the future. If you ask them, how do you see yourself 10 years from now? They're clueless. So it's almost as if they just bobbing in the middle of the ocean, without a compass, without any bearings whatsoever. Uh, th th this is very problematic. This is troublesome. As a community, it is important that we have focused individuals. Individuals with dedication. Individuals who are pursuing their passions. If not, you're going to end up becoming a person who goes to work every single day, but like a zombie. You will be at work with your mind elsewhere. Your mind will be, for example, with your family. And when you are with your family, your mind will be at work. Or you will be at work and your mind will be at play. And when you are at play, in recreational activities, your mind will be at work. Now my question to you is, does that make sense? You're neither here, neither there. You're constantly, and then when you sit down with such people, oh, I just don't have time. I just don't have time. Yes. It is from the signs of the day of Qiyamah that time will fly. But that's not an excuse. Some of us fall back onto that as an excuse. You know what, time flies these days. So really, you know, I can't achieve much. Yet in today's context, you see people achieving a lot. You see people who are climbing the ladder of success. You see it in the uh, corporate world. You see it in the educational world. You see it in... Uh, amidst athletes, you see it in the Islamic world, you see it, you see it where people, when they have an action plan, a, a course of action, when they have certain principles in place, they start slaying things, they start achieving their goals, they start, you know, realizing, and you see them achieving great things in life. They don't give in to laziness, they don't give in to being lethargic, they don't give in to procrastination, they don't give in to all these problematic areas. So it's important for us to constantly keep conditioning our minds. Because if not, my dear brothers and sisters, you can have all the potential in the world. You can have talents, you can have intelligence, you can have abilities. But without this kind of laser focus, without this precision in life, you won't be able to go far. Think about it. You know that the word, the word goal is used in football as well. The trouble... As someone once said, the trouble with not having a goal is that you will end up spending your entire life running up and down the field and you're never going to score. Or on the other hand, if you get your priorities mixed up, just imagine, for those of you who are familiar with football, what happens if you hit the, the goal, not to the opposite side, but to your own side? What happens? You think your teammates are going to applaud and, and, and praise you? No. So you need to know your goals, you need to define your goals, you need to be able to identify your goals and work accordingly. Let me give you another example of a coffee shop. You see, in certain airports, you go into a restaurant, you go into a cafe, you go into uh, a coffee shop, you see a queue. You see this long queue. And at times in certain restaurants, what happens? You have to wait outside to get a table. You have to wait outside until the table frees up because the place is so crowded. And this is generally the case in airports. So instead of a restaurant, let's, let's look at a coffee shop. Okay? So you are at the queue 
And gradually, you're, you're hungry, you're thirsty, you want to grab a coffee, and maybe you want to grab something to eat, okay? And you see a lot of people ahead of you, and then gradually, as you make your way up the queue, you start seeing people behind you. And that kind of builds pressure now, because the minute you make it to the counter, you already looked at the menu, okay, which is up there. You have a ton of choices, by the way. When you look at coffee, you've got, oh, so many types of coffee. Yeah? When you look at meals, you've got so many types of meals. And you're kind of like spoilt, uh, just as how when you go into the Uber Eats app now these days. You're like, you're hungry, and you end up scrolling, 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 and then, you know what? It, it's midnight, and you haven't ordered anything really, just like YouTube. You've got so many videos to watch, you don't end up watching anything sometimes, or you just go down a rabbit hole of videos, and you end up watching cats and elephants. That happens as well. So anyway, you make it now to the counter, and you can't now dilly-dally there at the counter. You have to place the order quickly. Why? Because there are people behind you too waiting to place the order. So you need to quickly place the order. And then most of the, sometimes in certain restaurants, in certain cafes, you pay there. In other places, you might have to pay elsewhere at another counter. And in certain other places, you eat and then you pay when you're leaving. You have different styles. Now this whole example, this whole scenario is somewhat similar to life. You have a ton of choices. The world out there. You can become whatever you want to become as long as they are within the guidelines of the deen. But there are a ton of choices. There are a ton of streams that you can go down. But just like in the queue, time is limited. And you are in this race. You don't have all the time on earth. You have to make the decisions quickly and you have to keep moving on. And unlike... Certain restaurants where you eat and you pay, in life, you have to pay. You have to pay with your resources. You have to pay with your money. You have to pay with your life. You have to pay with your time. Say, for example, you choose to become a doctor. You spend however many years becoming a doctor. And then after becoming a doctor, you realize that, you know what, medicine is not my cup of tea. You're wasted that period of time. Why? Because you didn't identify your passions. You didn't identify what you wanted to become initially. Because if you had, then that passion of yours would be a joy to pursue. Some people are studying very, very technical things with hatred. That's not what they want to pursue. That's not their passion. They're being forced to do it. So it's important that we identify what we want to do in our lives. Because we don't have time to waste, nor as believers we cannot be, like I said, bobbing in the water. You see, you have motivational coaches saying this, be a meaningful, specific, and not a wandering generality. You can't be a general thing that's just wandering. You need to be specific and you need to be specific in a sense where you do meaningful things you leave behind a meaningful legacy and all of what i've just said can be benchmarked to the teachings of the prophet وسلم, to the golden pages of islamic history look at every single legend that passed by from the great warriors to the great conquerors to the great rulers to the great scholars look at their legacies just one example I'm not even going all the way to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. If I go there, we'll, need, we'll be here and literally you won't sleep, we'll be here the entire night discussing. But let me mention one individual. Goes by. There's not a single talk that goes by, Islamic talk I would say, without his name being mentioned. Yes or no? Not a single Jumu'ah khutbah that goes by without his name being mentioned. Not a single Islamic talk, Islamic gathering that goes by without mentioning his name because Eventually, a hadith, a narration will be reported and you will say that this has been recorded in the book of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, rahimahumallah. So look at the profound legacy that that individual left behind. He was not a wandering generality. He was a meaningful specific. And until the day of Tayama, his name will resonate, will echo. So think about how many rewards he is accruing. If you are a follower of Imam al-Shafi'i, rahimahullah, for example, if you're following the teachings of Imam Shafi'i, each salah you pray, as per his teachings, he's going to be rewarded. 
If you're following the teachings of Imam Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, a great Imam, he's going to be rewarded. If you are benefiting from the teachings of Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, Shaykh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal, all of these scholars of the past, because of the knowledge that they disseminated, they are going to be rewarded. Subhanallah. So look, look, what a great legacy. And you have to, you have to identify because not everybody, not, 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 I'm not saying that this, now all of you have to become Imam al-Bukhari now, mashallah. It's good if you do. But you have to identify where your passions lie. If it's in knowledge, then so be it. If you look at the researchers of the past, if you look at certain profound leaps and bounds that were done in the world of medicine, there were Muslims involved in, in the world of education, Muslims involved. So identify your talents and work towards bringing about something meaningful through it. That's the whole point. At least this is a stepping stone to get to that, inshallah ta'ala. Now a few reasons as to why people do not set goals. A few reasons as to why people do not set goals. Number one, fear. Number one, fear. And I typed out fear like this because each letter stands for something. Fear as in false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. We have this fear of failure. We have this fear of tomorrow. We have all these false fears. Do you know what tomorrow holds? Do you know that tomorrow is going to be a bad day? Do you know about it? Are you 100% are you, are you sure of it? Do you know what it holds for you tomorrow? Then why are you letting that fear eat away at your today? It's a fear of the unknown that's driving you insane. The Prophet sallallahu he used to love optimism. He was an optimistic individual who didn't believe in bad omens. Who didn't believe in bad omens. He was not a superstitious individual. Today when a door handle breaks, oh, you know what, I'm not going out today. A black cat crosses by, I'm not moving, I'm not budging an inch. What has the black cat got to do with anything? It's a black cat. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no God, no power, no might except from Allah. Huh? Or oh, Friday the 13th. Oh, I'm not going to go. Subhanallah, this person's house, number 13, on the 13th floor, house number 13, I'm not going there. You go to where they get their vehicles registered, I'm not taking number 13, 13, no way. What have numbers got to do with your destiny or your outcome? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There's no power, no might except from Allah. He was not a superstitious individual. He was a positive individual. But we, on the other hand, we have been conditioned. You see, there was a study where it was said that the average 18-year-old is told approximately 180,000 times, no, you cannot do it. No, you cannot do it. And three-quarter of our self-talk. You know self-talk? Do you agree with me? Self-talk. No, you're not mad. You're not mad if you talk to yourself. We all do it. I talk to myself as well. We all talk to ourselves. It's just that some people go overboard with it and then you see them literally <laughs> talking to themselves while driving, etc. But generally speaking, we talk to ourselves. There's this voice in our head that we debate with, you know, this and that. We talk to ourselves. Three-quarter of our self-talk these days is negative. Negative affirmations. Low self-esteem. And that's why we look down upon ourselves. Because of constantly hearing negative talk. You see, let me ask you all a question. Your houses, your houses, beautiful houses, mashallah. Would you allow an outsider to come into your house and dump garbage in the middle of your house? Would you allow that? Would you allow someone to just come in? Would you allow your neighbor to bring in his or her garbage and come and dump it in the middle of your house? Would you let that person just walk out? Would you offer that person a cup of tea? Uh, would you say, yeah, Jazakumullah khair, thank you very much for dropping your garbage over here. <laughs> or would you call the police? Would you have the person you know, kicked out of your house? If that is the case, then why or why 
Do we allow people to come and dump garbage in our minds? By giving a year to that negative talk. You, you, you don't know how much negative talk conditions our minds. Even in a subconscious way, it, it conditions our minds. And that's why it's so important that we hear content of this nature that motivates us forward. You might be thinking, oh, it's going to be another talk that's going to be telling me about success and achievements and all that stuff. You need to hear it. You need to hear podcasts of this nature. You need to hear talks of this nature. You need to read books of this nature to keep motivating you forward. You need to be reading about the legends of the past. Young, young minds need to be nurtured with the great accomplishments and achievements of the legends of the past so that they aspire to become like that. As they say, shoot for the moon, at least even if you don't reach the moon, you land amidst the stars. Why? High aspirations. Uluwul himma in the Arabic language is a big part of the deen. A believer should always have high aspirations. Even when it comes to Jannah, don't just settle for level one in Jannah. Don't settle for level one. You know, you have a hundred levels in Jannah. And the only sadness that you're going to have in Jannah, you're not going to have any, oh, that sister is, you know, she's got this makeup, she's got this jewelry, or that brother is driving around in a Ferrari. <laughs> You're not going to have all these sadnesses. The only sadness that we will have in Jannah is that, oh, I could have made it to level two. I could have said one more subhanallah and I would have another tree in my garden. One more alhamdulillah and perhaps I would have another palace. Because there's no way for you to build once you go into Jannah. Here is where you build for your Jannah. So you've got a hundred levels in Jannah. So don't settle for level one. Don't settle for level two. Not level three, not level four. Keep asking for Jannatul Firdaus. That is the highest Jannah. Ask for it. And work for it. High aspirations. Another reason as to why people do not set goals. Low self-esteem. In other words, you have this, you have this, you, you, no, you have this uh, spectrum, superiority complex, inferiority complex. There are some people who are so full of themselves that their heads are about to burst out of pride. Now that is a quality of the devil. And there are other people who are on the other end of the, of the spectrum, other extreme, where they think zero of themselves. Zero as in, they feel like, you know, they can't picture themselves achieving. They can't picture themselves reaching heights. You should understand that you cannot perform at all in accordance with the picture. Why we cannot perform is because of the picture that we have painted of ourselves in our heads and our minds. That's why I started off by reminding you, That's the picture. You have been painted, you have been created in the best of statues. Don't go down to, You need to rise. The ones who believe, the ones who do righteous deeds, the, one who, one who, the ones who do good deeds, they keep rising, they keep rising. So low self-esteem. Before I move on to this, I'm going to ask you all. How many of you all have tasted failure in life? When I say failure, I don't necessarily mean rock bottom. There are some people who have hit rock bottom. <coughs> I mean failure in any way, it could be what? It could be failing at an examination, it could be losing a game, it could be losing out on a business transaction. Failure at any point, how many of us have, fa have, have faced failure? <laughs> Hands up. Sisters, failure, mashallah, all the sisters are winners. The brothers are failures. <laughs> Face failure? I have, definitely. So we all have. Can some of you tell, you, tell me why? Have you, have you ever, ever thought about it? You just raised your hand, right? So you recalled a point of failure in your life. Tell me why. Why did you taste that failure? Anyone? Sorry? Not enough effort, okay. Lack of, Lack of uh, preparation. Time constraint. Time constraint, okay. 
lack of knowledge, destiny. destiny, sisters, reasons as to why you tested failure. When you raised your hand, you recalled a point of failure in your life. So I, I don't need the, the, the details of the story, yeah? Just lack of support, lack of support very good. Not enough practice, so lack of practice, lack of training. A, clo a close person or the closest person being, so that would be betrayal or lack of, lack of loyalty. Let's go with that. So we're going with lack, lack, yeah? Anything else? Okay, not working. So lack of effort, okay? All right. Now, now let, me, let me show you common ground here, right? You, say, you saw the lack of all of these things. One, one umbrella term that encompasses all of that is that we can say it's a lack of resources. Time, effort, knowledge, training. You understand? A lack of resources. The brother said destiny. That's a deep answer. We'll leave it for another day, inshallah. But apart from that, <laughs> but apart from that, uh, what was it you said, Abdullah? Preparation. See, resources. Now, I have something to tell you. You have resources versus being resourceful. To be resourceful is to have the ability to find ways to overcome those difficulties. Let me give you an example. Money is a big resource. Okay? A big resource. <laughs> you could even call it the king of resources. Okay? Uh, there are people who say money cannot buy you happiness. And then they go on to say, but it feels better to cry in a Lamborghini but it feels better to cry inside a Lamborghini. Anyway, so they say that cash is king. Money is the king of all resources. But let me tell you, let me, let me highlight, if you don't have resourcefulness, let's say you run a company and you are having problems left, right and center. Okay, you're having problems uh, as does any company. You're having problems left, right and center. You are a CEO who does not have resourcefulness, but you have a lot of money, tons of cash, you have bags and bags of money. So what are you doing? You're throwing the money that you have at the problems, trying to solve the, solve the problems. Do you think that will solve the problems? That alone will not solve the problems. Yes, by throwing money, you can solve a certain extent of the problems, but by being resourceful, you'll be able to solve those problems better. Even without money, you would be able to solve your problems if you have this attitude of being resourceful. And you should always understand that the greatest of resources are the emotions that we have with us. The love, the kindness, the care, the empathy, sympathy, the fact that we can reach out to others. This is what we have been created with. You were not born with money. But you came with these emotions. You came with these emotional states. And these are powerful resources to be able to bring about a change. So this is something that we have to always bear in mind. Moving on. Another reason as to why people do not set goals is because the idea of goals have not been pitched across to them. For some of us, the word legacy seems like some kind of an application or some kind of a website. Why? Because we have not ever heard or nobody has spoken to us about the, 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 the concept of leaving behind a legacy. Likewise goals. Some of us have never ever sat down and thought about our goals. We have never really taken a notepad, taken our note-taking application and listed down our goals. We have never done that. We have never read down goals. We have never heard about goals. So that's why they have not set goals. So that's a, that's a pretty simple reason. And today, none of you can fall back onto that reason because alhamdulillah we have, we have tried our level best to touch on goals somewhat. Uh, another reason as to why people do not set goals is lack of definition. And this is what I said at the beginning. Lack of definition equ e equals uh, lack of direction. They don't have, either they don't have a specific direction or they think of goals as being something that should be extremely important. Like for example, some people have this one goal, I want to change the world. Now, that's a good goal, brother. 
but it, <laughs> it is an earth shattering goal it's it's a huge goal and how are you going to work towards achieving that now that's what i mean lack of definition you need to define that goal okay you want to change the world how in what way no i want to change the world entirely but how are you going to do it you see lack of definition they do have goals it's just that they lack definition okay now quickly let's talk about types of goals you have long term goals versus short term goals i'm not going to be spending a lot of time here because i'll be touching on this again on another slide in a few minutes finite goals versus infinite goals but here just one reminder most people overestimate what they can do with short term goals and underestimate what they can do with long term goals it's important that we identify our short term goals you see you have goals that are spread across time short term goals and long term goals like for example what i said earlier i want to change the world it's a long term goal now to achieve that long term goal you need short term goals in what way are you going to look at changing the world let's say i i i want to make the world greener okay how are you going to do that i'm going to maybe create an awareness in regards to using solar energy for example you see now you're breaking down that big long term go goal into short term goals i'm going to start creating an awareness maybe my country is a third world country uh, solar energy is not something that is being implemented here so i'm going to try and you know bring that in as a youngster this is something that you can do for example in terms of it's a move to change the world towards becoming a greener place to live it's it's a move towards uh, safe safeguarding the atmosphere around us Uh, the environment around us for the generations the upcoming generations it's it's a big move of course but then you break it down into short term goals that are more e that, that are palatable and easier to digest to achieve that big long term goal now something that is of more importance that i hope to spend uh, a few more minutes on is that we have different types of goals from a different perspective earlier what i said was in terms of time here in terms of categorization there are experts who say that we have seven at least at the very least seven types of goals seven types of goals so you have right up there spiritual goals you have goals related to your career your personal development goals you have financial goals you have health and physical physical and health related goals you have family goals mind slash intellect goals to be a well rounded individual you will want to it's not like uh, you know this assorted box of cookies <laughs> where you take one different cookie from each area not really you need to mix all of these and work towards goals in each area to be well rounded let's start off with spiritual to give you a few examples in terms of spiritual goals what do we mean when we say spiritual goals for us believers this is of utmost importance spiritual goals think about it with every single day do you want to ask yourself tonight before you go to sleep ask yourselves do you want to remain stagnant or do you want to improve in terms of your spirituality so you need to bring in goals evaluate 2018 for example how many chapters of the quran did i read simple and then bring in goals for 2019 i'm going to read this many and again i'll address that towards the end of the talk when we talk about how you're supposed to set goals but remember your goals need to be specific don't be like you know what i'm going to read the quran <laughs> it's vague it needs to be specific how many chapters and maybe even write it down put in a timeline so that you adhere to it that's one example another example evaluate 2019 and see okay you realize i have prayed my five fard prayers on a regular basis for 2019 i'm going to start praying my sunnah prayers the before and after sunnah prayers for the entire year spiritual goals you see and and also read about the people of the past you take the scholars of the past like imam ahmad ibn hanbal and the great people of the past they used to pray 
so many units of prayer in a given day. There are some scholars who used to pray 100 units of prayer every single day. 200 of optional extra prayer. Okay, so that's, that's a, a big goal. But right now you can start off by implementing the sunnah prayers. You can start off by making sure that you will read Suratul Kahf every single Friday. Evaluate 2018 and ask yourself, how much did I actually give out in charity? Your zakah, whether you like it or not, you have to give it. Okay? You have to give out your zakah. Optional charity, your sadaqah. Okay, I gave out 1,000 rupees. I gave out 5,000 rupees. I gave out 10,000 rupees. This year, as a goal, just as how in financial goals you're looking at making more money, you're looking at saving money. Here in your spiritual goals, you need to have a goal. You know, this year, I'm going to give out this much more in charity. This much more in charity. Last year, I focused on this charity project. This year, maybe I'm going to focus on this charity project. Spiritual goals. Spiritual goals. I have studied the tafsir of this surah. I'm going to cover the tafsir of these surahs during this particular year. I'm going to study about salah during this particular year. I'm going to study about zakah during this particular year. I'm going to go on umrah this particular year. I've not gone on hajj. 2019, I'm going to go on hajj. Or 2020, I'm going to go on hajj. And to go on hajj, you need to work towards it. You need to save money. You need to apply for the documentation, the visa, whatever it is. It's a goal. If you have a deadline, okay, 2020, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with my family, then khalas, you work towards it, inshallah. Spiritual goals. I, I, I'm going to work with a team. I'm going to work with a masjid. I'm going to freak. You, you can have so many spiritual goals in terms of improving your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each of these goals, they're going to help you improve your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't you think they're powerful? And don't you think you need goals in this area? You definitely need goals in this area to improve your relationship with Allah. Likewise, in terms of your career, where are you at now in your career? Bring in goals to climb the ladder, to progress in your career, to be successful in your career. You need to bring in goals. For example, Work towards getting a promotion. Work towards creating more job focus. Or if you're planning a career change, you need to plan it properly where you don't waste time. Or if you're planning to retire, for example, you need to plan that out properly. These are all career-related goals. Don't always rely on one source of income. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. What's, what's going to happen if you lose your job? And then there's no point in blaming Allah. There's no point in saying, why is life so unfair? There is no point in blaming your own destiny because you have the potential within you or you had the potential to be able to establish another source of income. So make that as a goal. A side income. Maybe something for a rainy day. These are goals in terms of your career as well as your financial side of things. Like I said earlier, maybe you are in credit card debt, come out of it. Maybe you owe someone money, come out of it. Maybe you got some money to start your business off. Make it a goal where you're going to you know, settle that off. Or you're having your own business, maybe you want to grow, maybe you want to open up another branch. Bring these in as goals. Your personal development area, subhanallah, this is an area that at times gets neglected. Condition your mind, learn new languages, goals. Languages are powerful. Read books. You see, when you look at successful people, there's one, one common thing that they all share, they all read. They all read. They read, they read, subhanallah. There are some who read even seven books during a week, that literally amounts to a book a day. Ask yourself, tonight, before you go to sleep, and that's why I said you won't sleep, how many books have I read? I'm not talking about Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. And it's okay. Something, better than nothing. But read books. Like I said, don't, don't put garbage in the middle of your house. Read books that are worth it, will help you. 
And regardless, reading helps you as long as you read the right content. It helps you, it empowers you in terms of your vocabulary, in terms of the knowledge, in terms of your speaking skills, in terms of enhancing what you know. The first ayah that came down was Iqra, read. Read. We are a nation that needs to be leading that in terms of reading. But sadly, this generation especially become very visual. Videos, 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 and the videos are becoming shorter and shorter and shorter. Now people don't want to listen to one hour lecture. No, I want a 15 second Instagram story. That's enough for my taqwa. That's all the reminder that I want. That's all. You see, our retention spans basically reducing, reducing, reducing. We can't. We're done with the story and we keep swiping. We're not able to retain attention, focus. So personal development, you need to work on developing yourself, your skills. You see, at the end of the day, we all have something to learn from another person. Perhaps you don't know how to change a tire, learn how to change a tire. You are, it's a skill that you're learning, it's a talent. Try to be a student, be a constant student. Never give, up on becoming a, never give up on being a student. Don't ever think, you know what, I know everything. I don't have to learn anymore. No. You have to constantly be a student. Learn from every experience in life. Learn from every single person you encounter in life. There's so much to learn. So much to learn. Health. Goals. You need goals. Health. This year, what? I'm going to opt for a healthier diet. This year, I'm going to bring in an activity. I'm going to walk 20 minutes every single day. I'm going to go work out thrice a week. Don't just have this vague goal, ah, I'm going to work out. No, be specific. Even don't, don't even leave it as vague as I'm going to work out thrice a week. No, even specify the days. You know what? I'm going to work out Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Or I'm going to walk 20 minutes every single day from this time to this time. Maybe I'm going to swim once a week. I'm going to try and eliminate unnecessary carbs from my diet as possible. I'm going to opt for green vegetables more. I'm going to eliminate carbonated drinks from my diet entirely for 2019. A goal. You, you, you don't know how much of bad those fizzy drinks are doing to you with the high... Uh, percentage of sugar and whatnot in those drinks and some of us are addicted to it some of us there are some I know of some brothers who have Red Bull for breakfast obsessed much yes addicted much Red Bull for breakfast and by the way it's not uh, in place of orange juice their breakfast is Red Bull <coughs> subhanallah it's not like a side thing with the eggs and whatnot. No, it's their breakfast. We need to... Uh, the people of the past, you, you, you see, they were, they were individuals who were strong. They were individuals who were focused in terms of their health. They worked on their... Khalid ibn al-Walid could get on a horse that was galloping. He could get onto it. And the other day when telling this to the youngsters, you know what I did, I actually pulled up a picture of a horse. Because whenever you say a horse in Sri Lanka, people think of the, the pony at uh, golf is. Pony is small. Pony is your height. The horse, Arabian horses are bigger than a Range Rover. Think about jumping on top of the roof of a Range Rover when it's moving, when it's galloping, when it's moving. Can you do it? When I asked the, the young kids, they were like, I'll put one leg into this stirrup and then I'll get onto the saddle and put my other leg into the other stirrup. Khalid ibn al-Walid, bareback, no saddle, just onto the horse. Umar radiallahu anhu, a wrestler. You think it's easy to be a wrestler? They were individuals who focused on their health and that's why they were individuals who achieved that much. When you don't focus on your health, you're going to become lethargic. You're going to be lazy. You're going to be sleepy. You're constantly going to be sleeping the whole time. You're making the wrong choices in terms of your food. And then you start developing sicknesses at a very young age. At a very young age. Think about it, sickness after sickness, you have to deal with it. 
and subhanallah these bodies that have been given to us are, are, are gifts we need to look after the bodies that have been given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't have rights to eat the wrong things and you know destroy our bodies subhanallah we need to look after our bodies so we need goals in that area family you need goals there to be able to increase the quality time that you spend with your family with your children with your wife with your parents with your relatives you need goals there in the in terms of your the, the upbringing of your children because once the children grow up and leave you and now you're yearning for their time and their attention and now they don't have the time for you so think about it you need goals in that area and the the area where i've highlighted as mind slash intellect it's connected to personal development again in terms of conditioning your mind listening to the right content reading the right content viewing the right content having the right co company your friends have a huge impact on you on the way you think on what you do and that's why even the teachings of islam highlight the importance of a good friend of good company in terms of your children in terms of your siblings in terms of yourself make sure you hang out with the right type of people if you are hanging out with negative people they're going to be like crabs dragging you down have you heard of the example of crabs take a bucket put in 10 crabs you don't have to cover the bucket you don't have to cover the bucket you can rest assured that not one crab will escape why each time one crab tries to get out all the other crabs pull it back in pull it back in so do you want to be in the company of crabs where each time you try to rise they pull you back down no 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 you can't do it you can't you're going to fail you're going to fail you're going to fail you're going to lose you're going to lose oh it's so dangerous it's risky it's risky oh who needs your services in this area why don't you focus on this why don't you focus on that they keep pulling you down they keep diverting you and shaitan plays a big role in that as well now, how do i set these goals i'm going to be talking about this as the final area of the content inshallah ta'ala there is a smart way to set goals smart a really smart way s m a r t your goals need to be number one s specific like I said at the beginning, don't have vague goals. For example, in 2019, I want to be healthy. That's too vague. You need to specify it. For example, make healthier diet options. Like I said, train thrice a week, walk for 20 minutes every single day. Make it specific as possible with the days and the timings. So S stands for making your goals specific. M, make your goals measurable. Your goals need to be measurable. Don't just say, you know what, for 2019, I want to lose weight. Again, you're being vague. Make those goals measurable. I want to lose 10 kilograms. And if you feel like 10 kg is a lot, then break it down to 2 kg maybe every month. I want to lose 2 kilograms every month. And then I'll reach my goal of losing 10 kilograms uh, within maybe 6 months or, 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 or a year. So your goals need to be measurable in terms of uh, quantity in some way quantifiable and then your goals need to be a achievable slash attainable yes like I said earlier shoot for the moon and you will land amidst the stars but try to bring in goals that are realistic that are achievable don't bring in a goal you know what I'm gonna make a million dollars in 2019 when you know that is almost impossible when you know in, in the hands of Allah nothing is impossible but within your means when you know that okay a million dollars a little too much so rather bring in a realistic goal where you know what I'm going to make a hundred dollars more say for the first quarter or for the first six months or for the first year I will make two hundred dollars more maybe I will make twenty thousand rupees more thirty thousand rupees more or ten thousand rupees more make sure your goals are attainable so that you'll be able to attain those goals R make sure your goals are relevant what did I say earlier learning languages beautiful goal but let's say you're trying to learn French when you have no need towards French whatsoever so that goal is not relevant that whilst you have a strong need towards Arabic now let's say you're looking at going and working in France or you have some job related to French or whatever it is then learning French is a completely different story but just because you got the chance to learn French 
you're supposed to make the goals relevant because you're going to be spending time learning that language whilst that time could be spent in learning something that is more important to you, something that is more relevant to you. Every form of knowledge is important, but you need to be able to prioritize appropriately. So make sure your goals are relevant to you and don't waste time on irrelevant goals. Not all goals are of the same importance. Finally, make sure that your goals are time bound. Your goals need to have a deadline. If you don't have a deadline, you're not going to understand the value of time. And without a deadline, you are going to give in or fall prey to the trap of procrastination. How many students? I've got an assignment in a month. Oh, I have 30 days. Oh, 29 days. 28, 27. Oh, two weeks more. Oh, that's okay. One week more. Ah, seven days. I've got seven days more. Five, four, three. Ya Allah, the assignment is tomorrow and then he doesn't sleep that night, crams in, has like three coffees or a whole flask of coffee and then goes and submits the assignment and hopes that, you know what, he's going to pass with flying colors only to hear that his assignment was a horrible mess. When you had like 30 days to do it, you've got this final thesis that you need to submit by the end of the year. Oh, 365 days, Masha Allah, so much of time. But that 365 days will go like this and then the deadline will be tomorrow. That's what shaitan does and that's what he will do with your entire life. What does he say? Oh, there's time, there's time. Don't go on Umrah now. Don't go on Hajj now. Do all the sins and let's keep the Hajj for the end because then you come back like a newborn baby. So that's good. So keep the Hajj to the end. Like when you're going to retire, then opt for Hajj. Then you can wash away all your sins. But what if you die before that? What if you die before making tawbah? What if you die before, uh, you know, praying, strengthening your relationship with Allah? So don't give in to the trap of procrastination. Have deadlines and try to achieve those goals within those deadlines. The final point, my dear brothers and sisters, is finite goals versus infinite goals. There's a lengthy discussion in this regard, but to summarize, you have two types of goals, finite versus infinite. You see, for us believers, we have these two powerful, specific, infinite goals that I will conclude with. But in terms of finite goals, you have to understand that there's been research done on this. For example, we have people who kind of encourage you to focus, yes, on finite goals as components towards infinite goals and not to restrict yourself to finite goals because if you do so, you are in a way asking for trouble. For example, we have athletes of the past whose, whose only goal was to become the greatest athlete of the world. For example, if you were to take someone like uh, Andre Agassi or Michael Phelps, their finite goals, or rather their goals, were to become the greatest athletes in the world. And they achieved it. They achieved it. For them, basically, they looked at everything and everyone as a means to achieving that. That's how they looked at every single encounter, every single person, every single thing that they came into contact with. How is this going to help me reach that goal? How is this person going to help me reach that goal? They had this mindset, this gladiator mentality. You see the gladiator. Each time the gladiator goes into the arena, what does he go with? He could die, but they keep going back in. So each time you go face the world, you could die, but you're going in there with that mentality to win. So they went with that mentality, but subhanallah, the minute they achieve the goal, kaboom, depression. Because what's after that? Okay, now I'm the world's greatest athlete, now what? Depression. Let's say, for example, your goal was, I want to buy a mansion in a highly residential location. That was your goal. Okay? And you work left, right and center really hard for it. And then the day comes when you buy the place. And now what? I want to buy another highly big house in you know, a residential location. Are you going to have the same goal again? You won't have the same drive. You won't have the same passion. So that's why your goals need to be infinite. But can, can a goal be infinite? Does infinity exist in this world? It doesn't. Everything is finite in this world. And that's where we believers stand out. 
because we have two infinite goals. Number one, the pleasure of Allah, which is infinite, and the life of the hereafter, which is infinite. Khalidina fiha. You're going to live in there forever and ever. Those two goals are our infinite goals. Everything else is a finite goal that is a component towards achieving that goal. Yes, we need a good life in this world, but more important than that is to secure a good life in the hereafter. Yes, we need to be happy, but what's more important is Allah needs to be happy. You see? So yes, we need to live comfortable lives, which is the loved, but Allah's pleasure, Allah's rida takes precedence. The life of the hereafter always takes precedence. We're not going to strive for a good life in this world by indulging in haram. There are people who would do it, you know, anyway, just to get a comfortable life. But we will not do it. We will not indulge in haram because the pleasure of Allah takes precedence. The life of the hereafter takes precedence. We want to live in Jannah forever and ever. So those two goals for us believers need to be our infinite goals and everything else is a finite goal that will help us to reach those two infinite goals. With that we conclude. We were hoping to have some time for Q&A, but as you can see, we have already run out of time. So inshallah, in the next session, we'll try to incorporate some time for questions.